I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, Six Pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another review? There's another paid request, this time from Matthew. Thank you so much for that. For those who want to request pretty much any type of videos or topics or commentaries, re-reviews, whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the new Suicide Squad. Now, I enjoyed it. Right off the bat, I did enjoy it. I thought it was fun. That was entertaining. Wasn't perfect. But because I thought there were some issues of pacing in the middle. I'm kind of done and over with Harley Quinn as a character. Just kind of tired of seeing her. But I thought the action was well handled. I understood what was going on. I thought that the gore was plentiful. Plentiful and brutal and oh shit didn't think it would be that violent The characters for the most part were fun to watch. I liked Idris Elba. I didn't mind the rat catcher lady. Teen Shark was fun. Also fun to have Sylvester Stallone voicing that character. John Cena, I can't believe I'm saying it. He wasn't that bad in the movie. He wasn't that bad. Considering the other films he's done and roles he's played. Because I thought they did a nice job casting. If you don't put him in a fucking film. Oh he's a guy who pretends he's a good guy but he's a two-faced dick. Yeah. I can see that with John Cena. That's actually perfect casting. Who would have thought that John Cena would be a two-faced dick? Yeah I could see that. Idris Elba, I liked as an actor. It was nice to see him shine in this movie. Now granted, there's a part of me that wishes it was Will Smith. Because I wasn't a fan of the first Suicide Squad. But I did like Will Smith. And I'm a Will Smith fan. I wish he was in this. Because this is more R-rated. So he did more of the R-rated bad boys type of Will Smith. And I just think he has more charisma than Idris Elba. Plus it was a bit weird because they're playing different characters. Diff once Deadshot, this... Idris Elba's character is called Bloodsport. So they're playing two different characters, but at the same time, it's a black guy who's a sharpshooter, who wears a mask, and has a father and daughter dynamic. Almost the same fucking character that Will Smith played, but it's a different character. I think they didn't... They're hoping Will Smith will be in a future film, so that's why they didn't replace him. I just make a different character. Although, again, it's... Almost the same character. Even the daughter's like, are you a bad guy? But he's not as bad of a guy. Just like in the first film, don't shoot Batman daddy here. But Idris Elba was good. It, it, he did a good, solid job. He was likable. He was funny at times. He was one of my favorite parts in the film. Same with Teen Shark. Like I said, the... the I... 
there is that part of me that does wish Will Smith would have come back. Now, the sense of humor I thought was hit and miss. There were some times like, eh, I don't know about that. But there's enough quirky and fetches energy that made it quite entertaining to view, to watch. Like I said, I think the pacing in the middle was a bit slow. Mainly because of Harley Quinn. Because the movie kind of stops for her subplot. And I'm just going, can we get back to the Suicide Squad? Can we get back to them, please? This new Suicide is more interesting. There's a more interesting thing to view, to witness how they're trying to work with each other. Compared to the Harley Quinn hour. Now, great, she did better here than Birds of Prey. She has a good action sequence. Well choreographed. It's just, again, uh, again, the whole Harley Quinn experiment thing. I gave her leniency in the first Suicide Squad. I'm like, okay, you know, not too bad, but just kind of over and, and done with her. The songs. Just that's one thing I did mind about the Suicide Squad is... The songs, although the way they were utilized was like every five minutes was a bit much. And okay, the first Suicide Squad I'm not a fan of. Is it the worst movie ever? No. Sadly, it's one of the better DCU movies in the fact that if you compare it to Man of Steel or Batman v Superman or Justice League, I would rather watch Suicide Squad. Hell, I'd rather watch Suicide Squad than Wonder Woman. I said it because I don't like Wonder Woman. I don't like Wonder Bra. Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. the fuck out of my face. I don't care about her. I don't care about her acting. I don't care. Get to do a duty. Overrated ass. Just like her movie is overrated ass. If you like Wonder Woman, cool. I'd rather go watch plenty of other better movies with strong women in them. I'd rather watch Suicide Squad than either Wonder Woman movie. I said it. But I just the, the movie just had too many problems and I know it got fucked around with. Maybe a David Ayer cut would be better. I don't know. I don't know. I can only judge what is released to the public. Now, with that said, I do think this is a much better film. I think it's a much improved film. I thought it had some really... It was creative. Even the way you would do the titles. The way you would do title cards, but it did it in a very imaginative way. So like this title card is part of the beach or it's part of the blood and the water. Uh, I th yeah, I thought that was a nice touch. The score was alright. Not a bad score by John Murphy who did Sunshine and kick Ass among others. Not a bad score by John Murphy. Overall, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty decent flick. Pretty good flick. Uh, there's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I, I do think it's worth a watch. I really do. And the fad's bombing because of whether the Delta, Omega, Cincinnati, whatever the hell, variables on the super cough. The fact people don't want to go to the theater, which I don't blame them. Or they're like, you know what? I haven't really missed the theater. I'll just stay home. Or people didn't like the first one so they don't want to see the sequel or people just didn't like it and word of mouth is divided whatever it may be I think this deserved more money than fucking Fast and Furious 9 F9 more like F that F that movie F that what did you point when even Black Widow was flopping and that's a big Marvel film you know Hollywood is in deep shit. And it was already in deep shit. But get back to the, the film itself. Going more into spoilers. Starting now. Spoilers. The way it opened I thought was fun. The way it opened where it was like a... Comedy version of Saving Private Ryan. In a way. Because they set up this team... And I knew this team was going to die. Very. You know, 
because all the marketing is not showing much of these characters because I'm like wait a minute I know it's Idris Elba and John Cena I know it's Teen Shark Guy Harley Quinn who the hell are these other people Captain Bo Boomerang comes back from the first one you have Flag Joel Kennedy you know, what what Kinnaman he was tolerable in this to be fair again I did when it makes Joe Kinnaman tolerable, when it makes John Cena not that bad, I know the movie's working. I know the movie's working. If I'm going to be fair, I gotta be fair. It was nice to see Michael Rooker and Nathan Fillion, you know, James Gunn, who directed this alumni, who were both in Slither, among others. Michael Rooker being a dick. Fucked it up a little bird. And you have this first team where it's him, Nathan Fillion, uh, this creature named Weasel, Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, a few others, Javelin Guy, some weird alien looking chick. They go into this beach area. One guy tries to turn on the team. He gets his fucking face obliterated. And I'm like, ooh, shit, okay. This definitely has the door. And <laughs> it showcases how sometimes these powers that these guys have are useless. Like Nathan Fillion can detach his arms. But when he goes over to the bad guys, he just kind of punching, like slapping them. And so they just <laughs> shoot the arms. I'm like, okay, that's pretty creative. That's what I mean by the creative juices. I just see some of the creative flowing. And I appreciate that. And people get the you know, heads blowing off, or someone tries to take down a chopper, it doesn't end well. Now, it did remind me a bit of Deadpool 2. I think Deadpool 2 kind of hurt it where it didn't seem as fresh, didn't seem as imaginative or creative as it could have been. Because Deadpool 2, which I, I would put above this as a movie, that had the X-Force. Where it's a team, and you think the team's going to do something, and immediately they get killed in funny or gory both ways. So, okay, that kind of reminds me of the, you know, X-Force, you know, the big Deadpool 2. But it was still fun to watch. It's a way to open the movie. I mean, Michael Rooker, in the spoilers, Michael Rooker's trying to swim away. He gets his head blown up because the running man, you know, the, the charges... And then his blood showcases the, the titles. Okay, and I like that technique. I like that uh, imagination. And you do... James Gunn did a nod to Dawn of the Dead. Because at the end of Dawn of the Dead remake, the song is, They died, died. These are people that died, died. Uh, which I thought was used better in this. Because the way you use in the Dawn of the Dead remake... I like the remake. I didn't care for the song at the end. I thought it was used better here. These are people that died, died. And it, the camera's roving to all these, except Harley Quinn, she survived, but all these other people that died. And the way the camera's moving to each one, it had a nice pace to it. Went fast, went quick. And then there's a second team, and that's Idris Elba and Polka Dot Man and Rat Catcher Lady and Teen Shark and John Cena. They're on another set of the beach. And these are the people we're going to follow. And it's a few days before we see the setup for it where Idris Elba, he doesn't want to do it, but then Amanda Waller, who's a fucking stone cold bitch that I'm just waiting for someone to kill. Suicide Squad 3, that's how you should do it. You should have someone kill Amanda Waller. Just, just despise that fucking character. Which, to be honest, you're supposed to. There is a good moment, though. She does get... There is a good moment that I was like, yeah. Which I'll get to. But she's like, okay, your 16-year-old daughter, I'm going to send her to hardcore prison. She may die. So ultimately, he does it. And Idris Elba, like I said, even though I would prefer Will Smith coming back. Just like I said, I do think Will Smith has a bit more charisma. 
Idris Elba, he was still fun. When he's arguing with his daughter, fuck you, no fuck you. Fuck, no fuck you. And I think he did work well with John Cena and their banter back and forth. Later on when they're trying to one-up each other and who makes the coolest kill. They had a good rivalry with each other. I liked that bit. Introducing the characters. Uh, rat Catcher has this really cute looking rat. Not the not too bad effects. And Idris Elba's like, I'm not shaking the rat's hand. Pretty much they get together. Scientific research facility. Project Starfish. Destroy it. Get your sentence reduced. Now like I said, the humor can be hit and miss. And some of the humor, like when Idris Elba's arguing with his daughter and... When some stuff was happening during the whole Save a Private Ryan opening, there was some chuckles. Other stuff, like the weasel, they're ready to get into it. The weasel just dropped to the water, but then he, slink, he sinks down because he can't swim. And people are going, did anyone check if the weasel could swim? Silence. <laughs> that, that, that got a chuckle out of me. But then even be, but then before that, when they're on the chopper, Harley Quinn is like, "Is that a werewolf?" And the guy's like, "I'm not sitting next to a werewolf." I'm like, I don't know, just something about the, like the one guy's like, "Is this a dog?" Oh, sure, it's a dog. Oh yeah, what what kind of dog is it, mate? I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's not that I thought it was god awful humor. It's like, eh, didn't really land for me. Same with the there's a briefing. Up it ahead and John Cena says something like I think it was in the might have been one of the trailers that didn't really sell me on the movie where Cena goes starfish now that's something for butthole any connection no okay I'm like shut the fuck up Cena John Cena sucks my dick John Cena sucks but he did get better I thought you know, the way that developed, uh, it worked for me. It worked for me. Teen Shark, I like what they did with that character where he, he just wants to eat. And the way Stallone voiced the character, I know friends. And... Pretty much him finally starting to get friends. And what he does, get violent, is fine. Like, he eats someone whole, he rips someone apart, he rips a fucking head off. That was cool. I do wish Teen Shark had more to do in the finale. That's one of my nitpicks of the film. But that's just me. So pretty much that team... First, they gotta find Joel Kinnaman's character and rescue him. And then they go find Harley Quinn and go try to rescue her. And then they go to this research facility to blow it up. Now, when they're going to this camp to rescue, rescue Joel Kinnaman, there's some fun stuff to that. Teen Shark eats a guy whole. Idris Elba, he's using a flamethrower, and they're each outdoing each other with their shots and what they can do and not do. One of the biggest laughs I got out of the movie, because I did not expect this part, was they go to Joe Kinnaman, and he's having tea. He's like, hey, what's up, man? Oh, yeah, these are the, the I want you to meet the leader of the Freedom Fighters. They're the rebels. <laughs> so the people they've been killing... Is the fucking freedom fight. And that realization. I went oh shit. And then their reaction. And then King Shark just. And pukes up a finger. That's dark humor. That I thought was actually effective. It made me laugh. And I'm like okay. I didn't see that coming. That's risky. But uh, I thought it was rather funny. It's not going to be every but one's cup of tea. But I thought it was pretty damn funny. Now it gets to this. 
Harley Quinn subplot where she's been captured and then this guy has an infatuation with her and wants to get married and then ultimately she shoots him and then there's a point where she's shooting a bunch of people and it's well choreographed and she's using this javelin killing people it's well choreographed it's visually appealing because when she shoots people in her mind the blood is flowers so you see flowers going everywhere on one hand, that did remind me of the ending of the Teensmen. Because the ending of the Teensmen, you had all the heads popping off, but they looked like fireworks. So it was like, okay, we can't show this all as blood, but visualize it as fireworks. This is the best way. Sparklers. That's kind of what it reminded me of. But it was nice to watch, but it just... I wish it was Teen Shark going on a rampage. Like if Teen Shark did a, a rampage, like this is why he's the teen, and he's ripping a head off and gutting people, getting shot, you know, just that would have been really cool. I would love to have seen that. And that's what I mean, you can have that same choreography, but have someone else that's part of the, the squad. It's just that Harley Quinn is so separate from the rest of the team for so, such a chunk of the film that it does seem like it's just her own movie for a while and then she's part of like, I wish she just wasn't in the film entirely and you could just cut that bit out put take that actress scene give it a teen shark or something and then it would be a shorter movie and I think the pacing would be improved I really do think the pacing would be improved because the others they Look for this character named the Thinker. They go into his bar. Teen Shark wants to go in. I could wear a fake mustache. And they're making fun of for it. And Teen Shark gets pissed. And he's like, fuck! <laughs> Walks away. That's another moment that made me laugh. Because I didn't expect him to say that. Fuck! And he gets pissed. Walks away. Yeah, that, I'm like, okay, I'm really being entertained by this. I'm having fun with this movie. God fucking forbid I do that. And then they get to the facility. You get some really bloody kills. You know, shotgun fun. Uh, little arrows into the eye. Where the hell? Uh, almost said dead shot. Blood sport is shooting. It's like these like slingshot things arrows I, I guess he pulls I guess there are arrows he pulls it back boom right into someone's eye shotgun blows a couple people away John Cena you'll know, come people up the pieces even polka dot man his character was kind of interesting because he needs to put these polka dots up otherwise he'll be overcome with the sickness Interesting, weird, that's, that's, I didn't, weird creativity to that, where it like becomes part of his face, and he's got puted up, and then he looks perfectly fine, and then his backstory, what his mom did to him, and his family, so he just visualizes his mom, and you get some weird moments with that, and he shoots polka dots, but they could be fucking deadly too. So they, they even took a character like that and made it interesting. Now, you get to the finale. Characters do get some pretty good moments. Spoiler alert, you find out what's going on, that the American government took this alien creature, Starro, experimented on it. Now it's super pissed. It could possess people by taking little jellyfish. Boom, right into a person's face. And they become part of it. Like the puppet master. Body snatcher type of stuff. And. Joel Kinnaman's going to get the secret out. John Cena. No. I will protect. Do this for peace. Do this for America. But it's the wrong thing to do. Cena fights 
flagged that character and Joel Kinnaman gets killed. I'm like, oh, okay. Didn't see that coming. And uh, John Cena playing a guy who's all for America, fuck yeah, but he's a two-faced dick. Again, who would have thought that'd be good casting? Hmm, kind of... Hey, sometimes the sun shines on a dog's ass. Sometimes... You know the phrase, they can't all be winners? Well, they all can't be losers either. Once in a while, you get a lucky shot, and this is seen as lucky shot, at least for me. And the ending, there, it was fun. There's a point where they could leave, but then Idris Elba, he does the right thing. He chooses, we're going, no, we're going to save these people in this town, and they do so. Amanda Wall is going to blow their heads off, and one of the workers smacks the shit out of her and knocks her the fuck out, and it's like, yeah. Now, fucking stab her. No, that they don't do that. But I'm like, yeah. Now I do wish sh the teen shark had more to do, because uh, he bites on the star creature, gets f thrown back. Uh, Idris Elba saves the rat catcher lady twice. I like this moment where he has a showdown with John Cena, and they both shoot, but. Idris Elba's bullet is smaller so it goes through John Cena's bullet and fucks John Cena up in the throat I like that moment that was cool and then saves Ratcatcher Lady again from getting smashed so technically he does at least some he's done some stuff to help save the day but it's funny that really the, the two people that kill the main villain is two girls, Harley Quinn and Ratcatcher. So it's like, huh, the only two people that kill the creature are the two women. The only people that survive, spoilers, is the two women, the black guy, and a shark. Uh, a lot of the white guys are evil or two-faced pricks. America fucked up and is evil. I mean, you know, people keep saying this film's not woke. I don't know if that's a hundred percent true. But see, this is the fucked up mind frame. Mind frame, mind frame, mind frame, mind frame, mind cuff, mind fuck, mind fuck, mind fuckery that Hollywood has been doing to us, the audience, for the longest fucking time. The longest fucking time. Because now anywhere. They do it so much. That even if a film doesn't do it. You're like on your guard. You're twitching like a mess head. You think there's fucking gremlin in the wall socket. Is there something. Is it. Is it. It's like. You gotta be on guard. I don't know why being on guard means you're doing fucking Baylor Gozy. But. Or T-Rex arms. But it's just like. And like I said, I wish, because what happens is the rat lady has all the rats go up and fucking eat up the starfish. Which is a phrase I never thought I would hear myself say. And then Harley Quinn goes into the eyeball with her javelin that she got much earlier in the film. And puts a hole in its eye so that the rats can go in. That could have been Teen Shark. But you do have Idris Elba shooting, firing, resting Ratcatcher Lady. Ratcatcher Lady <laughs> fucked it up most of it. And then Teen Shark going in. And you do have three. Just have the three survivors. Idris Elba, Ratcatcher Lady, Teen Shark. Three. That's what I mean. This film would be better if Harley Quinn wasn't in it. In my... In my it would be a better pacing. The movie would not feel like it's stopping in the middle for the Harley Quinn mini movie. And I'm just, I'm over her accent. I'm over her shtick. I'm over her, I'm just over her. Let Teen Sharp be the one. Because that would make more sense to me. 
Teen Shark goes to the eye, num num num, biting it, biting it, and then the rest come in to finish the job. He's swimming through the liquid of the eyeball. Because he's always talking about he wants to eat, he wants to eat. He can eat with the rats, and finally he's full. Like the whole movie, he's wanting to be full, he's always hungry. He just eats, eats, eats with all the rats. He's now full. He's finally full. Why, why not do that? Fuck Harley Quinn. I know a lot of people got pissed by that. This is my opinion. But they don't do that. But, you know, they don't kill him off, which is cool. It's just, I wish Teen Shark had more to do with the defeating of the villain. He really had nothing to do with it. So it's like, okay, was he even really that useful on this mission? But he does do, you know, stuff to the other, you know, bad guys. There, There is that. But, I mean, like, to the main villain itself, like, he kind of useless on it. I... I, I didn't care for that. I think there's a there was a better way to utilize the character like how I explained. But the movie ends He's able to Idris Elba's able to fuck with Amanda Wall. Hey we have this stuff, we can upload it or you know give us our freedom. Don't blow our heads up. So they're now free. And it was sad, it, like, the way it ended, am I okay? I was satisfied with my viewing experience. And then, if you go through the end credits, the weasel actually is alive. He putes up the water and he runs off to the jungle. Maybe he could go find the rock. Dwayne Johnson in the jungle says he do so many fucking jungle movies. The Rundown. Uh, welcome to the jungle, Jumanji sequels, Jungle Cruise. The power of the rock is in there somewhere in that jungle. And then at the very end, John Cena is alive because they're doing a TV show with him in it. Which fuck the TV show that he should just his character should be dead. He got fucked up, incapacitated, shot in the throat. But I wish they just would have killed the character off. You don't need a fucking sequel. You don't need a TV series on this. Which, considering how this film is bombing, I don't even know if that's going to happen. So, really, after the Weasel thing, just shut the movie off. Kind of like why I do a Dawn of the Dead remake. <laughs> if I shut it off, stuff don't exist. They didn't all die, die. But wait, didn't everybody die? Yeah, I don't know. I know, I know. But hey. Just like, I, if I can think Alien 3 don't exist, I can think other shit don't exist. The magic of editing in your mind. But yeah, it was... A, again, despite the fact that some pacing issues in the middle, I'm not a Harley Quinn guy, and uh, at least not in the movies. Again, again the first Suicide Squad, I, okay... I don't know, just... Sense of humor was not always... Great, in my opinion. But a lot of the characters were interesting to watch, or fun to watch. It was a good-looking movie. The effects of Starro, and others, even the little cute rat that was kind of rat catchers. I liked that it kept wanting to be friends with Idris Elba. I thought that was cute. Wanted to give it a leaf. And Adrian Elba was like, what the fuck am I going to do with a leaf? Leave that thing alone for me. <laughs> and there's actually a culmination of that at the end. I thought that was cute. I thought it did a nice job making me feel for the characters. It did a nice job making me wonder who's going to live or die. Which with that title, it makes sense. I do wish better songs were used to the end the I don't remember the songs. There's a Johnny Cash song in the beginning, which was fine. The idea the one song I'm like, oh, this is from the Dawn of the Dead Ring. Everybody died, died. Oh, there's one song I've got nobody. I am not a fan of that song. 
I did one. Get some fucking ACDC in this motherfucker, man. It's funny, ACDC is used in so many other goddamn movies, why can't this? Like, fucking Metallica gets used in Jungle Cruise. Why can't that be used in this instead? Fuck, but what fuck do I know? Overall, I thought this was a fun film. That was an entertaining movie. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, it'd be like a three and a half, maybe four out of five. I don't know. I'm still going in between. I know someone mentioned, oh, so you think it's above average? No, I think it's good. I think it's good. I do these a good popcorn movie. A good escapism film. And we don't get a whole lot of that nowadays. Especially with you. Know, like Fast and Furious 9. F that. F9. The money that gets. Should be going to this movie. But. You shit in one hand. You wish in the other. You see which one gets filled up first. If you don't like the film. That's cool. We agree to disagree. I. I'm trying to think if there's anything I'm missing. Liked it. So, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.